Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know the score. I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well, today I'm really excited to show you the box to the Sony A7C. And here it is. Yeah, very exciting box. And we're going to do an unboxing video. <laughs> no, we're not. I don't do unboxing videos. Here it is. Um, if you really think I was going to wait and do this before I actually play with a the camera, then you've got another think camera. Com ca camera? You've got another think coming. I can't even say it. You've got another thought coming. Um, couldn't wait to get it out of the box. I ordered the a7C with its uh, kit lens, a 28 to 60 kit lens. And that's, uh, there you go, what you see there. Um, I was going to get it body only, but I thought it's only a couple of hundred quid for the um, kit lens. And there's the kit lens. I actually ordered it from a company called Wex Photographic here in the UK. Uh, this isn't an advert for Wex. Uh, they're not sponsoring it. I just absolutely love the, the company and I love what they do. They're great service. Um, you know, brilliant. And they, they deliver on a Sunday or their couriers deliver on a Sunday. So there we go. That's the, um, uh, that's Fad that way. So it's the... As I say, it's the Sony A7C, newly released. It uh, was released about a month ago. Um, so we're now in towards the end of October in 2020. Um, and it's a compact uh, 4K uh, still stroke video hybrid camera along the same lines or very similar lines for a very successful A7 III. I've got the A7 III um, and I wanted something a little bit more compact but my main priority wasn't the compactness, was its video features. Now, this is identical in quality to the A7 III. It's got exactly the same sensor. Um, so for stills and for video, in theory, you'll get exactly the same quality. But I found in practice that isn't quite the case. Um, certainly not for video. And the reason being, this has no video record limit. So it'll just keep on going for either till the battery dies or the card fills up. And secondly, you can power it off a USB block, which you can't with the Sony A7 III. With the A7 III, you can charge a battery via USB, but you can't run it via USB. And you can with this. So it works very similar to my A6100 and my A6600. And that is great. I can just leave them running. And so if I make mistakes, I don't have to keep stopping and starting. I just keep on going. I don't have to worry about the 30 minute record limit. And apparently this doesn't overheat. Um, I've only had it two or three hours. I've not had a chance to test that. So please don't take this video as a review, um, an in-depth review of this particular camera. It certainly isn't. Um, and, you know, you, you, you must understand that. It's just my initial thoughts of what I think about the handling and what it can do. And, you know, I am chuffed to bits with it uh, so far. You know, really, really chuffed to bits with it so far. Um, I will put a link to my Flickr page of some of these test photographs I've done in and around the house and the garden. And uh, I've done some using the uh, Sony 28-60 uh, kit lens that I bought it with. That's the lens there. Um, the only thing I don't like about, like about this kit lens is you have to turn the lens on or off to get it to work. So you've got that really good click. But the Nikon does it. Canon do it. They all seem to have this design. There must be... A technical reason for it of which i can't think what that, what that is because a, a few occasions i've gone to take a photograph turn the camera on and you get that message saying you haven't turned the lens on so you do physically have to turn the ring turn the lens on and lo and behold you get uh, you get uh, into a position where you can take a photograph or take video whichever so i took some photographs with the uh, this lens, a 28 to 60 kit lens, um, but my fiance took some using uh, in and around the house on, in program mode. It's got program mode on this camera, using the Tamron 17 to 28, and this is an it's f2.8 lens throughout the entire range. I will do a review on this lens. I haven't done one as yet because I've only had this about a week, um, and this is again a great lens. Um, the only bizarre thing with Tamron. The focus of the zoom around the other way, so um, it's a bit bizarre, but um, but works great. It's a nice lens, really, really nice images that come off that lens. Um, so getting back to the A7C, top plate is fairly traditional. Um, it's got hot shoe, um, PASM dial, uh, exposure compensation, but it has got a really big record button. 
not like the little nipples that are on some of the Sony cameras. Um, the A6600 and the 6100, I've reconfigured the shutter release to be uh, the actual trigger for video, and that works great for me. I don't have an issue with that. Um, I don't know if it's got a tally light. Again, the 6600 and 6100 don't have tally lights either, but my lovely ZV-1, which is filming these close-ups, is actually has actually got a tally light, so I can clearly see that's running. That would be really helpful. I don't think this has got a tally light, which is slightly disappointing. Um, the back, fairly traditional design, fairly traditional setup. So you've got a four-way pad and a dial around it, and you've got your control wheel for adjusting aperture, shutter speeds, whatever. Um, it hasn't got the two, so they haven't put one on the grip which you will find on, you know, the a A7 III. Because this is very similar to the A7 III, but it's also quite a bit different. Um, certainly for video fe video features, it's, you know, very different. And it's a lot more compact. Um, it's got the articulating screen, which is awesome. Um, that's becoming very common and very popular with Canon, Panasonic, and now the Sonys. And it's great for video. Because if you're working by yourself, I've said this over and over again, it's great having a camera where you haven't got to plug an external monitor in and you either flip the screen up, which is what I do on my 6600 and my 6100, so I can clearly see, I'm looking at the close-up now, that looks pretty good. I can see the wide's looking pretty good. And even over my shoulder here, that's another A6100. That wide is looking pretty good. And the ZV-1, because it's got the articulating screen. And I don't have a film crew, so just working on my own. So I rely on really good autofocus um, and being able to see what you're doing. This answers all those questions as well. Um, articulates fantastic autofocus, um, uh, face tracking, eye tracking, autofocus. Um, awesome. So that's the articulating screen. Um, small viewfinder. I've not had an issue. Again, I've only had it a couple of hours, but I've had no issues with this viewfinder. Um, it is small, for sure, but I use it for composition. I'm not looking at a sharpness necessarily, colours and, and that kind of stuff, because I'm relying on the autofocus of a camera to be able to, to do that. Um, so I'm just pu purely using it for framing, and it's fine. I've, I'm not going to have an issue with it. I'm sure I'm not going to have any issues. But as I do more videos on this camera... Um, which I will be doing a lot more videos with this camera, then I should, uh, I, you know, I should explain to people if I have an issue, I will say so, you know. Um, so that is, you know, that is that. Um, as far as function buttons, it is, it is missing some function buttons. On the A6600, you've got two function buttons on the top here, uh, and on the A7 III. They've taken them away, so, um, but you've still got them on the back here, and you can set it up, you can still set it up how you want, you know. Um, likewise, because it hasn't got the dial on the front, then you've only got the one on the back. But if you're in aperture priority, well, you use the dial on the back for adjusting your aperture. It's got a separate dial for your exposure compensation, and it's very, very clicky. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to accidentally knock it. So that's really, really good. Um, but one thing that people are criticising, it hasn't got the uh, uh, joystick. So setting your focus points. Do you know what? On the A7 III and on many other cameras, I've never used the joystick. I couldn't get on with it. A, because its, it's placement was usually far too low and, you know, get into it. Um, so what I do, uh, I use the touchscreen. And I find that's absolutely perfect. I get on really, really well with that. So I either use the touch screen um, if I'm not looking through the viewfinder. So just touch the focus. So, you know, touch it anywhere. That's put a red box now where it is going to focus. I mean, that'll take the photograph. Or um, if I've got it up to the viewfinder, I'll just move my thumb around on the screen really quickly, very accurate. I mean, that's where it will take the photograph. So... Um, so if I take a photograph of my main camera, do that, and then play that back, double tap. It is touchscreen for reviewing images, zooming in and what have you, but not for the menu. You can't access a menu with a touchscreen. Um, but you won't be able to see that on that screen there, but uh, that's focused there beautifully, as you can see. You can move your, 
you know, you can zoom in and move around the image. I don't know if you can scan through the images, no, but just use that uh, thumb wheel there to scan through the images. So the lack of a, um, a joystick isn't really an issue. Uh, not for me anyway. Maybe it will be for some, but it certainly isn't for me. Um, so, yeah, nicely designed camera. All the function buttons um, are, are completely configurable. Configurable, does that make sense? Uh, so you can set them up for what you want. But the lovely thing is, as with a lot of manufacturers are doing, you can set them up for different modes. So if you're in video, you can set them up differently to what they do in stills. So let's say, for example, this bottom one here, the C button, you might, for video, set that up, which I've done, for super 35mm toggle. So you can toggle between full frame and 30, super 35 which is basically APS-C crop. So uh, it will crop in even tighter without losing any quality. So that's what I've got that set up for video. But in stills, I don't know what I've got it set up for. Probably haven't set it up for anything. Oh, white balance. It's set up for white balance in stills. So you can see how all these different function buttons can be set up differently to how you work. And that is really marvellous. Because I wouldn't want that for Super 35 in stills because that would crop this down to about 10 megapixels, which is completely pointless. Uh, well, not completely pointless, but mainly pointless. Um, it is a 24 megapixel full frame backside illuminated sensor, the same sensor as you'll find in the A7 III, but a different processor. It's got the same processor, I believe, as the A7 R4. So the autofocus is fast, it's uh, snappy, it is really, really good, both in stills and in video. Um, so that's um, effectively, you know, that. Um, on the side, you've got your ports. They've put them all on one side, which is blooming marvellous. So that's all your ports on the side there. Now they relocated the SD card slot. Now, on the uh, A6600, it's in the battery compartment. Um, it's only got one SD card slot, by the way. The A7 III has two. So if that concerns you, then this won't be the camera for you. It doesn't concern me. But um, in the bottom, the, the A6600 has the SD card slot in there. They've very cleverly, and I'm really pleased they have, relocated it to the side. It's much better on the side. So, And it's got uh, gaskets for weather sealing, um, microphone jack, 3.5mm microphone jack, um, above the monitor, if that makes sense. So when the monitor's articulated out, the microphone will be above it. So it's not going to interfere. It's not going to dangle across the screen. Um, and then at the bottom... Again, really good ports, much better than what they are on the A7 III. Uh, you've got your micro HDMI, USB-C and headphone jack. So that's marvellous. On the bottom, it's got um, obviously your tripod plate and your battery door. And this, is really, this is really, really good as well. It's very, you know, it doesn't sound to some people be really good, but the battery door flap won't interfere with... And he ain't got one to hand. Um, a tripod plate, I can assure you it doesn't because I've got various tripod plates. And that's great. You can still get your battery out while it's on the tripod. I've, the ZV-1 really annoys me. Uh, it's a tiny camera, so I, I forgive it for that. But you have to take the tripod plate off um, to get to the battery, then put it all back together. Oh, it's a pain in the butt. This you don't need to because you can still get to the battery. And that's blooming marvellous. Really, really like that. Um Simple thing, but, you know, really good. Um, it comes with, um, you know, the strap, USB uh, USB lead, um, and I say the strap, which I won't be using, the little Sony power block instructions and all the rest of it. Um, so that's basically a look around the whole camera. Um, it has got the separate video record button on the top here. Separate, it's much bigger as well, as I said earlier, rather than the little piddly one on the back. Um, so, yeah, that's the A7C, the Sony A7C, based around the A7 III, but with better video features, and that's why I got it. And as I said, I'll just uh, reiterate what they are again. You can run it off US, you can run it off a USB power block, so it'll just keep on going, and no video record limit. 
um, where with VA7 III, you have got a video record limit and it's got the articulating screen. So I can have it in the studio and see what I'm doing without having to plug in either an external recorder or an external monitor. And the thing with the A7 III, when you plug in an external monitor, anything into the HDMI port, it switches off face detect. It kind of doesn't switch it off if you're recording to the external recorder, but it's really convoluted and a bit of a pain in the butt. This doesn't do that because obviously the monitor is already built into the camera. So, you know, um, that, that is great. Um, so there we go. A reminder that there will be images on my Flickr page so you can have a uh, look at the images. I will be doing more videos about this camera. I will be filming with this camera so you can see what the video quality is like. This video is simply an introduction to, you know, its design um, and what I think about it. Um, it's not a detailed uh, uh, video. So there we go. I thought I would do a wee bit of filming uh, on the camera. I brought the camera into the office. It's Monday morning, so it's the day after I purchased it. I didn't get to upload the video yesterday, but I will be uploading it today. Um, I'm doing a quick bit of video, no lighting, no nothing. I'm using my Saramonic uh, Blink 500 microphones, wireless microphone, uh, connected to the camera. And it's great that it's got the articulating screen, so I can actually see, uh, see what I'm doing. Um, again, that's a big downside with the A7 III. And if you do plug a monitor in, you lose your face detect. And as I'm presenting to camera and moving around a bit, I would be, uh, I'd be bleeding hopeless, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have a clue uh, where I am. Now, I've got my Tamron 28-75 to lens fitted to it. I really like that lens. I think I'm shooting at f2.8. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm shooting at f2.8. Um, and I'm shooting at the 75mm end. So I'm a bit of a distance away from the camera. But I can still clearly see the monitor. So, um, you know, great, great, great piece of kit. Yeah, all in all, this is a great, great camera. Really enjoying using it. And this is just, as I say, a short video clip shot in 4K, but will be edited in 1080. Um, I thought I'd get this short video clip in before I upload the video to, uh, uh, to YouTube. And you will find a sound difference because back at my home, at my home studio, I was using the Rode M5 microphone going into my Rodecaster Pro um, podcasting sound desk, sound mixer, and then I synced the two audios together. This isn't. I'm using the Saramonic microphone, the Blink 500, straight into the camera. Um, and, uh, you know, so be also that would be interesting to see how well the preamps work on the uh, Sony A7C. I suspect they'll be fine, but I don't know yet. So there we go. That's the uh, a quick video test of the Sony A7C. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. The subscriptions are great. It helps me grow the channel. And I really appreciate every single one of you that go to the trouble and subscribing. It really does, really does help me grow the channel. And the comments I'm getting are really positive. I'm getting some really good feedback now. So uh, that is marvellous as well. And hit the like button if you uh, like this particular video. So here we go. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Thanks very much. Cheers for now. Bye.